Though with another Splatfest on the way, I think it's the best time to actually talk about Tricolor Turf and the strategies I ran with my friends during the test fire. During it, we ended up as a team of four, meaning that while it appeared we had the advantage, we didn't really. Today I'll be talking about what we did to end up winning nearly every single match despite being the defenders, as well as going over some strategies that we did lose to. So despite which side you end up on, there's something of value here. And if you do like the video, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. I've got a Zipcaster video in the works that you won't want to miss. So with that, let's just get right into it with Tricolor Turf Battles. We'll start with the Defender Strats, as that's where I ended up. The strategies we used range from pretty basic to kind of rude depending on who you ask. So let's start with a similar and more basic strat. Simply put, we just held mid. Seems it's pretty simple, right? Pretty much we only held the middle of the map and split our attention to main paths back in. Since middle of the map ends up as our most important area, both teams are inclined to re push relentlessly, and when they do so, since you control all of mid, your chances to get the jump on them are higher than their ability to get the jump on you. So if you're playing as a team, split up and just play at choke points and entryways, and just deny anybody a way into mid. Once the match reaches the end point and the final few seconds are ticking down, the players have to split up and push forward into the enemy bases to begin taking control of both sides. You want to wait until near the end as denying the ultra signal is vastly more important than pay control for the vast majority of your match. Then there's the more evil strategy. It starts out the same, but instead of just denying entrance in, you always push your advantage against one side. This means that two of your split players will try to also control an enemy base while the two remaining keep mid. This keeps every fight possible as a 2v2 making things a bit more even. How you decide which comp to fight is based on what weapons they're running. If you see a team whose weapons are weak to what you have, it's easier to push those players back. Say you're playing like a heavy splatling and one of the teams has like a clash blaster. Well, the clash is just gonna get hard bullied by the heavy, so having the heavy push the clash back and take their side is something that can easily be done. Again, this is a bit more evil as it is basically just bullying some players into a corner and taking their map. And now for the most evil, just straight up spawn camping. This is an evolution of the previous one, but is map dependent as not every map will let you get this close. If your team comp is just so vastly superior to the other team that you can just outright spawn camp, then you might as well just spawn camp. This is our most used strategy throughout the test fire and was the most effective. It goes without saying this is completely denies some sort of paint from one side, You'll want to keep it to one team at a time. If you do this and you're spawn camping both teams, you'll likely leave the ultra signal open for grabbing if someone were to slip by. Keeping things 2v2 is the most ideal way to go, even if you aren't trying the spawn camping strat. Always splitting into two groups as the four is a good strategy. Your overall advantage is four comes from having more people, and if you're coordinating with your other players in a voice chat, splitting up makes more knowledge and more information accessible to you which just makes it easier to keep the enemies at bay. Now say if you use any of these strategies and one team manages to reach the ultra signal and capture it, you may be thinking it's the best thing to do to go and paint the turf that they're given as a result of the capture. Don't. There's no reason to even attempt to outpaint it, as it's likely going to be different on every map, but in the test fire a bunch of big sprinklers appeared. There's no way to truly outpaint them. Instead you should be putting more focus onto the team that didn't capture. This could be working in the other strategies I mentioned, like moving and pushing your advantage into that enemy team. Once the signal has been taken, there's less of a defense that's needed in mid, and if the team repeat captures, the sprinklers or other gimmicks become more prevalent, and the turf they'd get would still be less than if you'd just taken over the entire enemy base and kept mid control. It only truly becomes difficult if both teams are able to capture, resulting in both teams essentially just getting free paint control with no effort needed. Now let's talk about the attackers. As mentioned, I wasn't the attacker, but I did lose a few times, so for this part I'll talk about the strategies we did end up losing to. As the attackers, your advantage comes from dividing attention. The best way to draw the defending team is actually to play with your other team of two. Pay close attention to when the other attacking team is moving up and move in alongside them. Some maps will make this easier than Shipyard did, but if you have both attacking teams moving at the same time, then your chances of winning a fight is actually higher. It then it becomes a 4v4 instead of a 2v2v4. You don't really need to even assist your other attackers, in fact you could utilize the chaos they create to sneak in and take the signal for yourself. Now if your team wants to play to just rush the signal, then you need a good plan to go alongside it. Some of the trickier strats I saw from attacking teams was actually just displacing us. 
Using triple ink strike along the signal or throwing a big bubbler down inside the signal were actually pretty effective. Tenna missiles are also likely going to be good options, though they weren't in the test fire. Basically, one of the more ideal strats would be to play to displace the enemy team using displacement specials to get less kills, but actually just make them move a lot. So basically, utilizing less kill specials and more displacement specials ended up working out a whole lot better against us than a lot of the teams that were focusing on things like Trizuka. Once you're able to capture it once, you may be tempted to go in for a second time. However, this might not always be the best call. Instead, you should be focusing on painting the other attacker's side. The Ultra Signal will keep your side painted a good bit. The middle of the map is no longer of any concern to you, but the other attack side is now where your attention should be. This is unless the defending team's comp is worse than yours, in which you're able to secure the Ultra Signal with no resistance from the defending team, then repeat captures can be effective. But if you only manage to barely squeak in the capture, then focus on the other attacker's side of the map instead. Split your team accordingly to how the defending team plays, and the other attacking team is more likely to focus on capturing the signal since you did, and the defending team is more likely to play more defensive since they already lost it once. There is also, of course, the strategy of just not playing for the Ultra Signal at all. You could outright ignore the middle of the map entirely and do something similar to the defending strats I mentioned before. Except for the other attacking team, of course. Having control of both spawn areas will still result in more map control than bothering to get mid. And depending on how the defenders play, they may just allow you to slip past them and keep the other attackers at bay for them. Both sides have their fair share of evil strategies, mostly revolving around flexing your comp's ability to keep them in spawn, but if you don't want to play that way, there are still things you can do, be it pushing the enemy team back but not spawn camping as the defenders, or causing so much displacement that you can swoop in and grab the ultra signal. Which strategy you go with should be dependent on the type of weapons you play, and the types of weapons the enemy team is playing. Always think on the fly and reassess the situation as the match goes on. There's always plenty of time to shift gears, so be sure to mess with things and try some of the strategies mentioned here. And if you guys do have some strategies you used, feel free to share them in the comments. I'd like to know what other people have been doing in their games. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.